Well, the Dow Jones Industrial Average down again yesterday. Material stocks selling off the most as the 10-year Treasury yield stabilized at around 3.2 percent. Flynn Zito Capital Management co-founder Doug Flynn joins us now to make sense of it all. Good morning, uh, Doug, Lord. good morning. Good morning. You know, I'm curious what investors are most concerned about here, or is it simply that, hey, it's October, a pretty scary month <laughs> for stocks? Yes, uh, yeah. October definitely has more 1% moves than any other month, but uh, it actually also is positive more than people think. But uh, yeah, the in interest rates rising put some pressure on the market in the short term. But if you look over the last 50, uh, 50 years, the 11 times that interest rates have risen, the stock market has risen 10 of those times. Mm -hmm. So in the short run, you might have a little volatility pickup, but in the long run, it doesn't bode the end of the, the bull but, market, at least where rates are right now. But, but Doug, rates are going up, wages mm -hmm. are going up, and material costs are going up. One True. reason why materials and industrials got hit really hard yesterday. Do you mm -hmm. think we're going to start to hear warnings like that when we start to get third quarter earnings reports? Uh, you can in the short term. You definitely can. There's no question about it. I think you have to look a little bit beyond that and say that, you know, while you have interest rate pickups and costs of borrowing, and that might put a short term damper on things, it also rises the potential for increased revenue. And with 20% earnings growth this year, and it looks like maybe 10% earnings growth next year, the market has room to run. It, things aren't going to get tight or until you get into the 4% range, at least from what we can see at this point. Yeah, and the other uh, issue that companies are battling, and consumers too, particularly with Hurricane Michael upon yeah. us, is oil prices and fuel uh, prices going Absolutely. up. Absolutely. Um, how do you expect the higher cost of energy to reverberate throughout the market? Right, so, you know, everyone has more money, theoretically, in their paychecks from the uh, lower taxes, and so hopefully that's a cushion against some things like this. But all of these type of events are things that hit you in the short run, um, and eventually they smooth themselves out. All these major events are things that are just a regional thing in the short run. So I wouldn't worry too much about it having a long-term impact right. because you have to look deeper into the fundamentals, and those still look very strong even with rising rates. We can support a little bit higher rates here. It's interesting to me. Oil prices are down a quarter percent right now at 74 and change. I wouldn't expect that with the storm <laughs> upon us and 40 percent of Gulf of Mexico production shut down, but that's yep. the case. Uh, those are traders. <laughs> what, yeah. What do you make, finally, 30 seconds here, of the yeah. IMF warning yesterday, cutting their global growth <clears throat> forecast, including their forecast for the U.S. economy for this year as well as next? I mean, it's not a surprise that after the types of earnings growth that we've had that we would have a little bit less of earnings growth next year. You, it's hard to follow a 20 percent growth year with continuous 20 percent growth years. Uh, mm -hmm. I th we're still the hot spot. We're still the, the place to be. Europe has not done well, although in, the, uh, in September, actually, the international markets outperformed the U.S. for the first time in a couple of months. I'm going to give but. you another although. <laughs> History shows, we'll see, because you're pretty positive, and I hear you, uh, that the year after the midterm elections are good for your portfolio. So I don't know yes. if the party might continue. Doug, you, thank you so you much. Bet.